David Lilly. I work as a certified recovery specialist and a certified peer specialist at Columbia Montour Schneider in Union County Mental Health and Drug and Alcohol Agency. There's hardly a day goes by that I go home with the attitude that I didn't make at least a little bit of difference in somebody's life. Sometimes on the end of a very, very hectic day, just go home and pick up my guitar and I don't know many chords, but if I strum a few chords slowly, it has a soothing effect. I love to brag about my family, and uh, especially my little granddaughter and, and uh, my daughter. My son, in addition to my sister, whom I annoy, but I love her dearly because I'm always busting on her. My brother David is a very sweet, gentle, and loving man, and as long as I can remember, he's always cared about other people. David is uh, probably the nicest person you'll ever want to meet. He comes around like once a week, usually on Sundays after church sometimes, and sometimes he'll bring like chili or something to eat. We'll watch football because it's Sunday. When I'm off work and he comes over, we spend some time together. We have a pretty good relationship. And, uh, I, I was a mess uh, before I was diagnosed. At that point in time, I wasn't really seeking help. There were a lot of people telling me that I needed to get help, and I was uh, taken uh, to the hospital. I was acting strangely. They had found him downtown wandering around, and he didn't know who he was, where he was. He had no ID. The most devastating thing was to walk in there and him not know who I was. I was his sister, and that was very, very hard. And when that was first diagnosed, I, I was very scared about what uh, what was going on. My thoughts were so scattered and and so psychotic at that point, I was very afraid because I didn't know where I was. I did not know what was going to happen to me. Uh, I, 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 was, I was sick and I, I never had anything like that before. I first began thinking about taking my own life when I was working in a hospital in the Harrisburg area. I was away from my family uh, for prolonged periods of time, and uh, the pressure of them not being with me became overbearing. I felt myself getting sick again, so I felt I was dragging them down and was going to put them through yet another hospitalization. More shame, more embarrassment, more stigma. I could feel myself become a manic again. Having had so many hospitalizations, I said, well, what, what do I want to do with this? And I thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe the family's better off without me. So the entire day, this thought began to build and dwell, and it escalated very quickly. So I grabbed my pills and took my rifle up behind my house, and when the pain got real bad, I was going to do what I needed to do, not thinking that they loved me you know, and thinking that that they'd be better off without me and so I acted very irrationally very quickly uh, very irresponsibly my aunt picked us up from school there was paramedics and everything at my house so my mom and my dad and everybody in my family didn't want us to see that he took me to the local hospital put me in the intensive care unit the next day, very early in the morning, I think it was around 3 or 4 a.m., uh, they uh, life flighted me for emergency dialysis. I stood on my deck and I saw the helicopter. It flew right over my house with him in it. And at that moment, I didn't know whether he was gonna live or die. Well, that was a very pivotal day in my life when, when I nearly died. And, and I firmly believe that life turns around when you take ownership of your problems, when you take ownership of your illness, when you take the responsibility of taking your medication as you're supposed to take your medication. That did not happen for me until the doctor came in when I grabbed a hold of his sleeve and I asked him, will you help me? When I took ownership of that, and those were my words, instead of somebody saying, you need to get help. When I knew I needed the help and when I asked for the help, 
I really believe that's when my life started to turn around. The Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, known as OVR, is a state agency and we specialize in working with people who have disabilities that substantially impede their ability to be employed. One of the things that um, struck me about David was his commitment and the fact that when he came to me he had done quite a bit of research on what venue or arena in the human services field he wanted to pursue. He had also done a lot of research and spoken with personnel at our local college because he knew he was going to need some training in order to enter the field in which he is in. In my previous occupations, I would, I would always go home tired and worn out at the end of the day and, and all stressed out. Meaningful work is extremely important to a person with a disability. It helps them be more included in life he just seemed like a different person when he went back to school. He had a goal, he had a purpose, and he had a direction which he hadn't had before. Well, that opened up a lot of doors for me and, and got me believing, really believing, that people with a mental illness can and do recover. You know, and that helped me find hope right from the get-go because Sandy had the confidence in me that I could go to college and succeed and that reason being I was on different medication. I was on medication that worked. I was in therapy that worked. The primary purpose of a peer specialist is to instill hope. Hope that people can recover. Hope that people do recover and by modeling that. And by having a job like this where you go home at night knowing you made maybe just a little bit of difference in somebody's life and it may be giving them just a little bit of hope, you rest very well at night. They would actually save someone's life because they were in a chat room and this young man said he was just that's what was it. He said, I'm not coming back anymore because I'm going to commit suicide. I'm going to kill myself. And David kept him on the line in the chat room long enough to get information from him to find out who he was and where he was. And then he called 911. Uh, they were able to locate him and uh, to get him the help he needed. I'm glad to see that my dad is much better and he's much happier and in a much better place right now. And it just, it makes me happy to know that he's doing much better. When I was growing up, all I remember my dad was seeing him sleep on the couch. And now I actually see him awake. Giving up is not an option when you have an illness, um, especially with suicide. Uh, a person can get into such a deep hole, they can't find their way out and all they need to do is reach a hand out and someone will be there, someone. If it's not a family member, it could be a doctor, a priest, but they need to do that because they're so down in a hole, they don't realize what their death would do to a family member that is left behind. Had I lost my brother, it would have been devastating because we had both lost our brother a uh, couple of years before that. My brother served three tours of duty in Vietnam. And I lost him in 1988 at the age of 42. And I would like to think that if the Suicide Prevention Lifeline would have been available there or the Press Ones for Veterans Extension, he might have received the help that he needed so, so badly and to lose David would be my, losing my last sibling. When I had my suicidal thoughts, there was no suicide prevention lifeline. It would have helped me in 1996 if it had been available back then. Oftentimes, and I find this with my peers, they're afraid to call. They're afraid to ask for help, such as I was keeping it inside of me, thinking I could do it myself. I could fight through this 
suicidal ideation or this suicidal thought or this suicidal tendency or this self-injury on my own. And often the case we can't do that, we need to call for help. When I nearly died, and nearly missed out on a lot of, uh, a lot of my children's life. And it's been a real blessing to uh, watch them grow into adults and be blessed with a grandchild. And, and sometimes you get quite emotional and sometimes it brings tears in my eyes that I nearly missed all that.